Um, so this is an interesting title. I'll try and interpret it appropriately for you. My disclosures have not changed since yesterday. Um, what's all this about? Well, you may know about this story. There was a young man who, um, on the way to market, uh, was sold some old beans by an old man in exchange for a cow. And when he got home, his mother was particularly upset and threw the beans out the window and sent him to bed. This story probably dates back to the 1700s, but it may have happened earlier than that because Shakespeare alludes to some of the verse in one of his plays. Anyway, the beans grew outside the house, and the next morning there was a beanstalk that Jack could climb up to the giant's house. And he went in there and discovered there was a goose that laid golden eggs. And he stole it. And there's a happy ending to this because on the way down the beanstalk, although the giant was chasing him, he managed to chop the beanstalk down and the giant died. And he had the golden goose, the, the, the goose that laid the golden eggs. Now, we, we're very lucky, actually, because the goose, you won't be surprised to know, was actually a surgeon. And he was born with a laparoscope in his hand. There he is. He comes from Glasgow. Um, and the egg hatched out, um, and to the goose's surprise, it had this prescription for enhanced recovery care. So we're all very lucky that that occurred. Does that fit, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> um, and I think I've been asked to talk about recovery after laparoscopic surgery, and also I thought I'd throw in some challenges which I think are relevant. Um, what about recovery, first of all? There are, you can consider it a number of different ways. You can look at complications. You can look at hospital stay, which I think is a good covert, a good proxy marker of recovery. You can look at functional recovery. And you can look at late surgical problems. So I'll just touch on those areas for you. Now, you've all seen this sort of graph. We've been peppered with them for the last three days, but luckily I'm not going to talk about it because it doesn't relate to enhanced recovery care. It, it actually was a graph, was um, a plot showing the fact that you decrease complications with laparoscopic surgery in rectal cancer surgery, but none of these studies included an enhanced recovery program. So really they're invalid to interpret whether laparoscopic surgery provides a benefit in colorectal cancer resection when we have a good enhanced recovery program. And what, what does give us an answer? Well, there are a couple of small randomized trials, but really we get closer to the truth with either a big cohort study or a multi-center randomized trial. We now have there was no ERP in these. We now have two multi-center randomized trials to try and answer this question. The first was from Holland, from Willem Bemmelman's group, and showed a reduction in hospital stay with laparoscopic surgery, even when open surgery is optimized within uh, an enhanced recovery program. And the second was from the UK, and has a similar outcome. It's actually slightly different in that patients were blinded, so methodologically it's far stronger, and it included rectal cancer surgery as well. Um, but interestingly, logistic regression analysis in the LAFA trial showed that laparoscopic surgery was the only determinant that it reduced complications. So it seems from that multi-center trial, laparoscopic surgery, even within when open surgery is within an enhanced recovery program, confers a benefit in terms of patient recovery, specifically complications. Um, and then there's a big cohort 
study that is currently unpublished that comes from the ERAS group that I touched on yesterday and a limited fluid regime clearly improves recovery but laparoscopic surgery as I mentioned yesterday significantly reduces both major and minor complications. So two robust pieces of data suggesting that actually laparoscopic surgery confers a, a reduction in complications even when open surgery is optimized within best practice. This is the effect on hospital stay, as I say, a covert marker of recovery. The two trials, the LAFA trial on the left, open surgery on the left, and then laparoscopic surgery on the right, then the enrolled trial, the UK trial, identical data, interestingly, even though the enrolled trial has blinded patients and carers. So interesting data. But what about functional recovery? Actually, we talk about hospital stay, we talk about complications, we don't talk about the late effects of recovery. And those of you who see patients and talk to them, uh, if you're honest, will know that actually recovery is much more complex. I've skipped over quality of life because I don't think it measures quality of recovery very well. And actually there's only one study with a, with a good improvement in quality of life, the Korean laparoscopic rectal cancer surgery trial, which showed a benefit in quality of life at three months after surgery. And they had over 200 patients in each group, so big study. There are a couple of other studies with benefits of quality in life, but they're really pretty tenuous and therefore I've ignored them. And as I say, I don't think they reflect quality of recovery. This is something we did when we looked at the, um, quite carefully at the um, patient's favorite occupations, time to what they described as full recovery, time to driving, and a number of other um, markers that we chose and we published and you can see there's a significant difference in quality of recovery according to the patient, admittedly a non-blinded study, even up to a year after surgery, the laparoscopic group being superior to the open group, even though there's a small number of patients in the study. Um, but there's another issue that's really important, and that is incisional hernia and adhesion obstruction. Um, the LAFA trial has, has addressed that, and you can see a significant difference here between incisional hernias and adhesion obstruction at about a median three-year follow-up from laparoscopic surgery, less risk for the patient of long, late, long-term problem. If we correct for BMI and follow-up duration, there's still a significant difference, improvement following laparoscopic surgery, there is not a significant difference in intervention rates, but these are relatively small studies. Some people think there are aspects which are important. This young lady had a laparoscopic proctocolectomy and pouch procedure. She thinks that other issues are important, but they're clearly, in my view, subsidiary to correct excellent quality surgery but I think there is a byproduct in terms of cosmesis as well as incisional hernia and adhesion obstruction. Now, what are our challenges? This is still a challenge. We looked at our data. We have a 9% ileus rate. I think it's worse after right colon and left colon surgery. We haven't got over it yet. It's a challenge for us to improve it. An astomotic leakage in, will occur in our practice between one and 12% of patients, depending on how we measure it and what operation it is. That's a real challenge as it is a seriously comorbid problem that we haven't got over. And maintaining an ERAS program is an issue and we have alluded to that in this conference. Um, I think this is a very nice cartoon that someone drew for me uh, and it's about multidisciplinary working. And I actually changed the surgeon to the anaesthetist in the cartoon. 
Um, it's difficult working together. It's really important to work together, and that's why this conference is so important to bring different, different groups, different professional groups together as, a, as one group and understand what is important to each of us and learn from each subsection of the profession. Um, there's an excellent document that helps us learn. Unfortunately, it's still massively overpriced, but it's uh, a good document. Um, and the last thing I was going to touch on was training in laparoscopic surgery. This is a real issue we have problems with. How to improve the acquisition of skills, shift the learning curve. Um, if we, first of all, you've got to understand, is it worth doing it? Is it actually applicable, laparoscopic surgery? And um, we think it is. I say that because in a consecutive series of rectal cancer surgery, which you might consider be some of the most difficult surgery, we would perform laparoscopic surgery in all but 3% of patients. And I don't include hand-assisted surgery and laparoscopic surgery in this definition. And we would convert 9% of those patients. So we would regard laparoscopic surgery as almost universally applicable in our practice. Um, we have to understand it's not always easy it's a more difficult laparoscopic operation to learn than most. And it's important to keep that in mind. And when surgeons are learning, they might want to start off piste at the most difficult case. They always ask me what my port positions are for a total colectomy when they first see us operate. But actually, they need to start in a more modest way and work up to it. Um, we established a national training program in England and that greatly helped roll out laparoscopic surgery and looked at competence assessment as well. And I think it's really quite appropriate to train people in a structured way. We assisted surgeons with 20 cases in England, those surgeons that wanted to learn. I would assist them with 20 cases. And there were a whole bunch of centers around the country who would assist them with 20 cases in order to enable them to learn better. Um, this sort of um, video helps as well. We've, we have detailed videos to help people learn faster, structured operate, ways to do the operation in which you go from one step to another with um, an excellent quality of surgery. There, for me, there are only two things that are important in laparoscopic colorectal surgery. One is to be able to skeletonize vessels, and the other is to identify the tissue planes. This is an example of skeletonization of a vessel. You can see there is no blood loss in the surgery. It's reproducible in virtually every case. This sort of video is available from our website to help people learn. So I think we have a happy conclusion to this process, which has been going on for 20 years. We can see a benefit to laparoscopic surgery, even with an enhanced recovery program. We have some significant challenges in our recovery management still for you all to address and hopefully improve. But with appropriate application from surgeons, which does require a lot of work to learn the technique and a multidisciplinary approach from all the excellent speakers you've seen in the last four days. I think there's a massive improvement in surgical outcome. Thank you very much.